I went to Daddy Gio's office and I saw map of the world. And I saw... Welcome to Remnant Online Followers. Please kindly subscribe. Thank you. You know, you can worship a thing and call it God. That you are calling it God does not make it God. The real God has attributes. And there are two major dimensions of attributes God possesses. The first attributes are his essential attributes. That is the attributes that define his essence. This spirit, what are the characters that defines him? So they call, we call it essential attributes. And then God has moral attributes. His moral attributes are his characters in relation with creation. The way he deals with creation. That's why attributes are also called his communicable attributes. If you will know God and have a rich relationship with God, you must understand the attributes of God. That is what will influence how you interact with God. So let's begin quickly with his essential attributes. The first essential attribute of God is that God is eternal. What does that mean? He has no beginning. He has no end. He is the everlasting one. He, ha he has always been and he will always be. So there has never been a time where God is not. So God is actually beginning and end. But the truth is that beginning is in God and end is in God. Because God really does not have beginning and end. Are you following? So when we call him God, we are talking about the one who is before anything is. And the one who will remain when everything is gone. This is one of the reasons God exercises authority over everything. Because, because he predates everything, everything belongs to him and originates from him. If you know this, there is an assurance it will impart in you. See, the reason why I am not afraid of tomorrow is not because anybody promised me anything. It's because my God is eternal. I know that even before I step into tomorrow, he's already there. And if he's already in tomorrow, then my tomorrow is secured. Why do you think I follow God's leading? I follow God's leading because I don't know tomorrow. Perhaps, if I know the end, I will require God. The reason you hack into God, even in what you know, is because your life also will encroach into realms that you don't know. And so you want to take right, it makes sense to you. The one who knows tomorrow, say no, take left. What will you do? You will take left. So when you find people who follow and seek God's leading, it's because they know he's eternal. It's only a man who doesn't know God is eternal that will be wise in his own self. Because he doesn't know that even tomorrow has already been covered. So it's important to understand the eternity of God. Second essential attribute. God is self-existent. Nothing created him. He created all things. And what it also means is that he exists in and for himself. God is the only being that exists because of God. Every one of us seated here will exist for a purpose. Have you seen people be God before? Who are angry and are telling God, if you are there, why are you not doing this? So they get angry. They say, if God is, why is there evil? They think God is existing for them. God is not existing for you. You are the one existing for God. That's why if you are wise, you are lying to him. They tell themselves, I don't care about God. If God exists, why am I going through this circumstance? If you are wise, better find out what he says to do. Come out of it. Otherwise, you will be in that circumstance, you will die. And you will discover that he is. He doesn't exist for you. You exist for him. If you know it, you will cooperate with him quickly. When Job was going through crisis, a point came, Job became tired. And Job started questioning God. When God showed up, he looked at him. He said, who is this that darkens counsel? By words without knowledge. Your words doesn't have knowledge. You are not here because of you. You are here because of me. And if you know this, no matter the circumstance you are going through, you will lift up your hand and say, holy is your name. Because it's by praising him that you will come out. And in case you don't, come, you don't come out, he is the God. The Hebrew boy said, we will not be careful to answer you in this matter. Our God can save us. But in case he doesn't save us, we will not bow. That means we know his existence and his significance in our lives beyond everything we are going through. God is self-existent. Number three, God is immutable. Immutability of God means God cannot change. And God is unchanged. That means he has never changed. And there's nothing that can change him. This is why you can believe God with your life. If God tells you now, on the last day, I will raise you from the dead. Even the day you are dying, you will die with joy. Because you know that he won't change his mind. If God looks at you and tells you, I have blessed you. Even if you are walking through 
poverty, you will be going with thanksgiving. If God looks at you and tells you, you will have children, even if 10 doctors tell you that your womb is dead and that you are impotent, you will tell them that's not what God said. I will rather believe God. Let God be true and all men liars. But the people who can believe God are those who know God is immutable. So there's no day you will come and say, did he change his mind? Did something happen? There's nothing that can happen. He can never change his mind. As surely as he lived, it, it will come to pass. Malachi 3.6, he said, I am the Lord. I change not. Therefore, you, the sons of Israel, are not consumed. Number four, God is omnipotent. That means God is all powerful. Nothing is impossible with God. He has the power to do whatever he wills. And he has the power to put his power under the control of his holy will. I explained that to you. He doesn't just have the power to do anything he wants. He also has the power to put his ability to do anything under his will. That's why you can't coerce God to do what he didn't plan to do. So God is powerful, but God's power is under his control. He is not powerful and lawless in his power. You know, there are many people who say, God cannot do any, everything. If God can do everything, can God lie? No. God cannot lie does not mean God is not all powerful. God cannot lie means God has the power to put his power under his holy will. So he will only do what he wants to do. So he's that powerful. And anything he wants to do, nothing can stop him from doing it. If God is not doing anything, it's because his will does not warrant it. If his will warrants it, then nothing can stop him. It is in that context that we say God is omnipotent. Revelations 19 verse 6. All powerful. These are the essence of God. And so we call it his essential attribute. I'm not all powerful. I can do some things. But see, see the difference between us and God. Even the things we can do, the power with which we do them are derived. If you don't eat food for 21 days, some will die. Some, if we don't eat for 7 days, there's hospital emergency. I see you straight. Some 3 days, some 24 hours. If we don't eat, we are done. So, you see that even the bucket of water you can carry is a derived power. It's ATP you are using. If you don't eat, after a while, you can't carry that bucket. Are you seeing the difference between our power and God's power? But when it comes to God, He doesn't need to eat. He doesn't need to be encouraged. He doesn't need to be energized. He is the source of His power. Does that make sense to you? That's why only God is reliable. If I say, I want to give you money, and I carry the money I'm coming. And I'm robbers collect it. Meanwhile, you have pledged your whole life on that money. I will come to you in my integrity and say, My brother, I was coming but I lost the money. There's nothing we can do. You will see the truth in what I'm saying but there's no capacity. But if God tells you he's coming, number one, the money can't be stolen. Number two, he can't forget it. And if he leaves it behind and it comes to you, another money will come. So there is capacity. That's why we say he's omnipotent. If God is not doing anything, it's because his will does not permit it. So if you know God is omnipotent, what do you now do? Number one, you believe him regardless. And then number two, you find his will and align to it. Because his power works in what? The direction of his will. Many people who don't understand omnipotence, they are getting God to do what God's will does not sanction. That's why they are stranded. And then they come back to say, God said he will do it. He didn't do it. You don't understand God. This is why you need to study his essential attributes. Number five, God is omniscient. He is all-knowing. He knows all things at all times and in all times. He knows all things within himself. And he knows all things in all of his universe. God does not learn anything. He knows all things. And he cannot be corrupt by anything. So when we say God is omniscient, we are saying, number one, he knows everything at every time and in every time. Let me explain what that means to you. That means everything happening everywhere in the world now, God knows it. That also means everything that has ever happened in the world, both the one that happened on the first day of the world and the one that will happen on the, on the last day and the one that will happen in every day in between and in every second, God already knows it. You know, even AI has to be updated. 
Because the AI doesn't know what's happening now. Are you following? So God knows everything now. And he knows everything in every now that will exist. Because every second is a now. So there are many nouns. In the last one billion years plus. There are many nouns. Or many presents. And in the next billions. There will be many presents. God knows everything that will happen in every second that will exist. Now many people don't know God is omniscient. And so they think things in their heart. And they talk other things with their mouth. And God looks at them and says loose. They are praising me with their mouth, but their heart is far from me. Even the one you are not saying, he's hearing. Some people don't know God is omniscient. So they go and hide and do something wrong. And they come to God's presence. They say, I love you, Lord. And they are shaking their voice. And they are, they are acting holy. Men will look and say, Kai, this man is a holy man. This man is a holy man. They will even go and give seed. Meanwhile, in the realm of God, everything you did was revealed. It was open. He said, all things are bare before you. So if you know God is omniscient, number one, you will strive to do his will. And number two, you will tell him to help you to think and do his will. Because there's nothing about you that is hid before God. And if you also know God knows everything, when you are talking to God, your goal will not be to inform him. Your goal will be to believe him. You know, some of us come to pray and we try to educate God about our problem. And so we spend hours upon hours talking because God can't understand what we are going through. Prayer is not so much about talking. No. Prayer is so much about believing and hearing from God. Today, if somebody wants to talk to God, he's talking as if he's teaching God English language with so much self-righteousness and pride. And God is looking at him. You can't receive anything, no. Because you don't know the one you are talking to. Abba Father. You are the one that sculpted the very boundaries of the rivers. We look upon you. <laughs> My brother, I was like that. After a while, it dawned on me that this thing is about heart-to-heart -heart connection, not about talk. So relax. I've taught you here before to learn how to praise God, to eulogize God, right? So I'm not necessarily against praising his name, but the pride of acting like a peacock in God's presence. Drop it. You are talking to the one who knows all things. He knows what you want to achieve. And many times, you stood before people. What you want them to perceive is that you are a spiritual man. He will allow them to perceive that you are a spiritual man. But nothing will happen. You want them to perceive that you are a man of many encounters. He will allow them. But nothing will happen. But if what you want is him, your focus will be to engage him. And you will see that your Christianity will be rid of burdens. And you'll start having resort very quickly because your heart has been purified. But all of that will come if you become aware that it's all knowing. So even before you talk to God, you'll be careful to be sure what you want and to be sure your motive is pure. God is omnipresent. Do you know why sometimes we enter a situation, we become afraid, and we enter certain situations, we are bold? It's because we don't know God is omnipresent. You know what the psalmist said? Even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I fear no evil. Why? Because there is a revelation that sponsors that boldness. He said, because thou art with me. But see us. We are bold about God when we are in church. We are bold about God when we are in the public. But the moment the circumstance is tweaked, our confidence in God changes. Because we don't know God is there with us. He said, even if you go through the fire, he's there. He said, if you go through the water, it's there. So the reason you know fire can't burn you, the reason you know the water can't drown you, is because you have come to understand his omnipresence. But I can tell you, many Christians don't know that God is omnipresent. This is why the true texture of our Christianity is not revealed in church. It's revealed outside church and in difficult circumstances. When you want to find the quality of a man's Christianity, forget church. 90% of people are active acting bold, acting strong. The day he has pains on the chest and the doctor said, what am I seeing here? He will say, sorry, check well. Check well, doctor. Check, I've been exercising. I've been, what do you mean? What? They say, well, we don't know yet, but we are seeing something like a gap. Before they do the, the test and the radiography, the guy has fainted. The next time he comes to the hospital, they'll say, ah, why is your BP rising? 
The last time you came, your BP was normal. So the diagnosis alone will add another sickness. And this is what the elders knew. That they walked in the fear of God. Because they were mindful that even on their workplace, God was with them. They were mindful that even in their thought, God was with them. They were mindful that in their dealings with men, God was with them. But we don't know God's presence. We don't know his omnipresence. We think God is only present in church. And so when we come to church, we are all acting pious and holy. But the moment we walk out, we become wolves in sheep clothing. Finally, God is what? Omni benevolent. That means God loves you unconditionally. He said in John 3, 16, For God so loved the world, that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. In Romans 8, 32, he said, If he did not withhold his only son, but gave him freely for us, how shall he not with him give us all things? Again, many don't know that God is only benevolent. Somebody will be hearing me now say, well, what do you mean? Is it not Jesus himself that say, ask for daily bread and he will give you? But there, you will keep asking for daily bread. It's the same God that invited us. He said, ask of the hidden, I will give to you. And the uttermost part of the earth, I will give you for your possession. So it depends on where you want to pray from. The man who asks for the nations, does not need to ask for daily bread. The requirements of daily bread is included there. But the one who asks for daily bread cannot take the nations. The nations will be far. I heard Pastor Chris speaking the other day and he said he didn't know that the globe was so small. I, I shook my head. I said, what do you mean? Is it Australia you are talking about or Canada? They are distant places. They, where they are operating now, eh? they put the map of the world. Rhapsody will go to Australia. Rhapsody will go here. They just stick. When you see the map of the world, you see dots. Those dots are nations that they have conquered. So in their own scale now, nations are dots. I went to the Geo's office and I saw map of the world. And I saw vision 50-50, 2050. They already have something that covers 2050. And I saw nations, dot. Nations were dots. Meanwhile, you, you are seeing Nigeria. It's big. You are inside Nigeria looking for how to conquer Abuja. Some people have entered where nations are what? Dots. So when you see dot is Canada, you see dot is Nigeria, you see dot is Ghana, you see dot is and that's where to operate from. Anything that is possible, we demand it. I didn't qualify for anyone. He gave me freely, so I'll go for the best. That's why the Bible says you are the head and not the tail. You are on top and on top only. People look at you and say, you are ambitious. Oh God, there's no ambition with God. Because you can't ask enough. What's the difference between ambition and purpose? Ambition is when all your focus is about yourself. But when you talk purpose, you are talking about glorifying God. You are talking about improving the lives of others before yourself. Is it one million you use to glorify God and improve the life of others? Is it uh, staying in one bakia the Maraba that you will glorify God and improve the life of others? Come out of that place, brothers and sisters. Come on. We need billions of dollars. <laughs> we need billions of dollars. To do something that the world will say, yes, their God is good. We need billions. Do you know how many widows are in Abuja? Do you know how many offers are in Abuja? Okay, one million is not enough. Hundred million is not enough. We need billions in different currencies. There's so much to do. So much to do. Don't limit yourself. See, when God looks at you, he's looking beyond you. He's looking at his agenda. He's looking at his purpose. He's looking at his glory. He's looking at the betterment of others. That's why you can't afford you can't afford to be a mediocre. This mediocrity kind of Christianity is born out of a lack of revelation of the omni benevolence of God. Paul said, if he did not withhold his only begotten son, but freely gave him for us, how shall he not with him? See, thank God for the job you are doing now, but ask for the best. When you start asking, the Holy Ghost can tell you, take this course, take that course, take it and ask. Thank God for the position where you are on your job now. Thank God, but ask for the head. You too can be there. It's not ambition. The more empowered, the better equipped you are to advance God's kingdom and to fulfill purpose. I studied it in my own life. There was a time and there was a level where I was. <laughs> if I give you 5,000 Naira, man, you have met the kindest dimension of Apostle Mike. I mean, I have to be in a very good mood and you have to talk well to get 5,000. Because those were times when maybe in a month I was earning 20K. So 5,000 was huge cash. There was a time when 
People can just ask me, casual need that they need help, I send 50,000. What's going on here? Then there was a time when people asked me for help, I sent 200,000. And then there are times when people ask me for help now, I send 1 million. I send 2 million. I send 4 million. And I don't even feel it. In fact, it was harder to give 1,000 seven years ago than to give 1 million now. What has happened? You give from your status. You give from your level of transformation. You give from your level of empowerment. That's why when you come to God and you say, Lord, give me my daily bread. We are giving people nations now. Those looking for daily bread, go there. I've empowered somebody else. You can, your daily bread can come from the leftover. I was talking to my wife recently and there was an NGO. They were looking for a grant and they applied for $50,000. You know what the donor said? He said, that's too small. We don't give such grants. The level where they are, they only deal with people who can utilize from $20 million. So they can't give that because it's not in their repertoire. The projects that they are commissioned to handle, $50,000 can't appear there. So they, they, they don't have a bureaucracy for managing it. So if all you are looking for is daily bread, God has many sons that can give you daily bread. But if you are looking for nations, come closer. If you are looking for generations, come closer. If you are looking for dispensation, come close. Somebody tell yourself, I request for the best tonight. And so there are many Christians today who don't dare ask God for the best. In fact, when God gives them the best, they think it's a mistake. They think somebody else deserves it more. They think they are not qualified for the best. And so when they are asking God for things, they are careful to ask God for the least things. And they think it's piety. They think it's humility. It's actually a lack of revelation of the unconditional love of God. There are many people today, they are bold to make declarations in God when they have fasted. When they are coming from the mountain, after 14 days, they are moving like anything they say, heaven will give them. All their words become commandments. But when they don't do anything, they feel they don't deserve anything. So in their interaction with God, they believe they should only get what they deserve. Trust me, if you were to get what you deserve, it's death. And condemnation. So why consecration is important and I have taught you several times. You must know that everything God is giving to you is not about you, it's about him. It's about his unconditional love. And so if through Christ he has given you the opportunity to ask, bro, ask for the best. Don't come before God and say, Lord, sustain us. Lord, help us. No. Manda, pero, savaka. When some of us come, Father, Give us this generation. Make us a voice to the nations. Lord, <laughs> if you gave Jesus everything that my destiny requires, I receive them now, not tomorrow, now. Your will and you are able to give now. See, that's what informs the quality of your life. There are some people that if they enjoy the two blessings, they say, Kai, I beg, God has been too faithful. I don't even deserve this one. No. I beg, I beg, I beg. Lord, thank you for this one that I have done. See, thank him for what he has done but there's more he said ask you shall receive he's inviting you to ask and he said if you, are, if you have exhausted all you know he said seek you will find even the ones you don't know I'm ready to give you and he said in case you have found it and you don't have it knock insist place demand you know what he said in Jeremiah 33 verse 3 he said ask of me I will answer when I'm done answering I will show you great and mighty things that you know not of. See, when you need a husband, don't say, Lord, I don't ask for too much. Just give me a good man who will care after me, who will provide my need. Rubbish. Lord, who is the best husband in town? That's the one I want. <laughs> Thank you for watching. Please kindly like, comment, subscribe, and turn on your notification bell so you always get notified whenever we post a new video. And don't forget to share. Thank you.